Won't that inflation spread worldwide? Aren't we already seeing inflation all over the world? Well, I mean, I think that's a very good question because, you see, in America, they publish essentially core inflation and core inflation on the state, the true cost of living increases. Hello? Yes, sir, I'm listening. That's music. Stay right there. We've got a break. Everybody always pauses on that song. We have Willie Nelson on. He goes, sounds like ice cream trucks. <laughs> Mark Faber is our guest joining us from Thailand. We'll get him to finish up on that point uh, and uh, talk about a few other subjects as well on the other side. Are you tired of losing your hard-earned savings in retirement? Does the continued loss of purchasing power through the hidden tax of inflation brought on by trillions of dollars in government bailouts bother you? Then please let me, Dwayne Daly, with Midas Resources, help you to protect what you have left. Call me at 800-686-2237, extension 115, and I will explain to you how to retain your wealth and purchasing power now and in the future with gold and silver. Gold and silver have been a form of currency for 6,000 years compared to our present fiat currency, which has only been in existence for 38 years and failing fast. Call me, Dwayne Daly, at 800-686-2237, extension 115, to start your protection of wealth today. I will custom fit the protection package to your personal needs. No amount is too small, so start today. Call Dwayne Daly with Midas Resources at 800-686-2237, extension 115, for your gold and silver protection portfolio. Our guest is also a worldwide bestseller, not just in the United States, but also in Asia. The website's the Bloom Boom Doom Report. That's Bloom. BoomDoom.com. Okay, sir, finishing up your point about the economy and inflation and, and worldwide. We're already seeing these dollars being printed, driving up inflation in, the, in Eastern Europe and places, aren't we? Well, my point is this. Let's say if I traveled 20 years ago to emerging economies, the price level was very low. But after the U.S. began to pile up large trade and current account deficits, which led the current account deficits from, to grow from $150 billion in 1998 to currently around $800 billion. This $800 billion flowed into the world. And in many countries, they inflated the price level with the result. That today, if you stay in a hotel in Sao Paulo or in Shanghai or wherever it is, it is as expensive as in the U.S. So I think that the, the inflation figures in the U.S., A, by just excluding energy and food prices, do not reflect the true cost of living of a typical household. I don't know whether any of your listeners have insurance premiums that have gone down. They're all going up, health care costs going up, all contributions to the government for uh, garbage collection and so forth and so on. All this is going yeah, up. Yeah, all the price. taxes are going up and they're telling us we've got low inflation. And, yes, and now exactly. I mean, it's a joke. It's a total joke. And don't forget, this is the worst economic contraction post-Second World War. In such an economic contraction, prices should come down, but they haven't. So and my I, view is that once the economy picks up, whatever that is, next year or in five years or in ten years, I think there will be strong inflationary pressures in the thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. We've already got serious inflation with 20% unemployment with the real numbers. My God, imagine when it's 5% unemployment. Uh, are they going to dump the dollar? I mean, I know that... People aren't sure, but it, we see the world creeping away, kind of moving quietly towards the exits, the dollar going up and down wildly. Uh, I mean, you're out there in Asia right now. The dollar's clearly been devalued. You were just talking about that. Is the dollar a dead duck? Yeah, I think so in the long run. But you understand, the long yes. run could be 10 years or even more, and in between you can have strong rallies. I mean, we had a period now between March of this year and just 10 days ago during which inflationary fear overcame and people rushed into commodities and equities and gold and so forth, and the dollar was weak at the same time. Now maybe you have a month or two or three months 
where the dollar could rebound somewhat, where bond prices could rebound somewhat, in other words, where interest rates would decline somewhat, and then you have again more deflationary fear. And uh, during this period of time, obviously, equity prices would move lower. But I think in the long run, with Mr. Bernanke at the Fed and with the economic policies of the U.S., that are, in my opinion, misguided because the economic policies of the U.S. target consumption when they should target capital formation, in other words, capital investment in the form of infrastructure, in the form of capacity expansion in new industries, capital investment, education, and research and development. So the consumption is basically a loss for the economy. Yeah, the economy so what's happening is... We're in a uh, cannibalistic economy where we're all living for today, still running up the debts, and the whole infrastructure is going to hell in a handbasket. Uh, where do you see the United States in five, ten years? Is a third world uh, fallen empire like the Romans in 410? You see, I was just a couple of days in Sao Paulo in Brazil, and I travel extensively. I can tell you when I first went to Sao Paulo in 1974, there was a huge difference between Miami, San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York, and Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo being underdeveloped and the American cities being well-developed, or relatively well-developed. Today, I don't see any difference between Sao Paulo and the uh, U.S. large cities. And I also see the third world coming up, but we're dropping. Yes, I mean, it's not necessarily that the U.S. is... Uh, tumbling to the bottom of the ocean or drowning to the bottom of the ocean. But in the last 20 years, other countries have made huge progress and are now major competitors to the U.S. And so the U.S. and also to some extent Western Europe have stagnated while others have come up. Got it. Mark like Faber. Mark Faber, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, the website's gloomboomdoom.com. Thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. You bet. Take care. All right, we'll be right back with your phone calls and a lot more. Stay with us. 1-800-25-9931.